Hello guys, so today we have uh, Skellige reviews, all of the cards have been revealed. Uh, the video should be a little bit later than usual because we got uh, two very late reviews. So I'm recording just like one minute before I've seen the Shin Miri card. So I might be wrong with some takes because uh, I didn't really even have time to think about this card. Uh, but let's go quickly through the cards. As last time, let's go from common, rare, epic to legendary. And I will try to credit all of the artists, all of the reviews, all of the content creators that uh, have a card review. Uh, and I will try to think about what, what will be there, uh, what will happen in the next meta. However, I think this is uh, so far the juiciest uh, leaks so far. Let's go to the common. So the common card was uh, presented to us by Bad and Ship Me. Sorry for butchering your name. Uh, little half rule. Deploy bonded, increase the card's base power by two, order damage dealt by four and spawn a rain for two turns on an enemy row. So it's all kind of six for four always. Uh, it can be eight, second one will be eight for four, which is already good. So on average, if you get two, you have seven for four, which is kind of standard right now, but it's okay. Uh, and however, what I didn't realize at first when I saw this card, uh, you can kill this in like a self damage deck. Uh, like imagine you play this one for six, then you play a second one for eight. You kill those, uh, this one that is six, you resurrect it with like Freya's Blessing and you have 10 for four already. So it's a little bit like uh, the Relict card and the Relict card was kind of broken at uh, that goes to nine. It can go to 10 quite easily. Of course you can make some fine things, weird things. Uh, but I d I'm not sure if teleportation would work, maybe, but I don't think you play teleportation just to boost it by two. <laughs> there is a difference between boosting this by two or by uh, four. Uh, also, it looks like it will be awkward for um, opponents of Skellige to just kill cards. It's no longer a good idea to kill cards, it's better to lock cards. Uh, however, I kind of like it. Uh, yeah, the more I think about this card, the more I like it. Also, the spawn of rain will be relevant, if you e e e like you will see uh, soon. And this card is like a pretty decent 4-drop. You're not gonna see it in every single deck. Also, the beast tag is kind of, kind of relevant at the moment. Uh, it's not a druid. So you probably won't see play it in like a beast, in like a rain druid version, but you will play it in the uh deck that i will talk about later after we see all of the reviews so that's for the rare let's go to the common that was revealed today but by, uh, by shook tv the french community uh exactly by, by xibalba uh and i think out of this uh, all of these cards that might seem weird what i'm gonna say this one is the archetype enabler uh whenever rain or storm damage enemy units boost cell by damage dealt. So basically it's uncapped great sword that works only with rain and storm. This might be the reason also this this crab is so cute. This is so cute. This crab is so cute. Anyway, um, this kind of with, with, is working like an old great sword, uh, which means that it's kind of a dagger for, for six provision. Uh, you can instantly spawn or play whatever rain and storm and it will instantly boost to six again you kind of cannot kill it because uh, your opponent will be able to uh, resurrect it with a lot of stuff maybe we will even start playing in skellige uh, purify just to purify the doomed tag from my opponent from opponents because a lot of things all of these things you might want to resurrect and a lot of Skellige cards can resurrect and put bleed on it. Uh, sorry, doomed on it. So maybe we will start playing even purify just to get rid of uh, doomed tag, uh, just to get a nice value later. Uh, it looks like also Skellige will be a master of a short round, but we will talk about it later. Mm. This card is pretty good. You will play it in any rain and storm deck, and also because of this card, you might actually include Skellige storm, like. No Kappa, regular Skellige Stort might actually see play just because of this card. I don't know if it has a alchemy card, probably not. Tag, probably no. Uh, but 
Because you will play so many rain and storm, a lot of things will be damaged. So there is a, there is a, there might be a version of the deck that actually use a lot of uh, bloodthirst uh, cards as well, like Wild War of the Sea. You might actually see play, uh, which means that some of the cards like Dagur will also want to see play because all of this pinging damage you have. And again, because of all of the um, things you will see in the future, uh, you have a lot of ways to resurrect a lot of this stuff when you think about it. Uh, so this card will enable this archetype and it will be, I think, a decent archetype. Let's go to the just revealed, revealed uh, epic card. So this is the card revealed by Shinimiri. Uh, 8 for 8, this card starts in your graveyard. When played or summoned from your graveyard, trigger all remaining rain and storm on the opponent's side of the battlefield. This is kind of nuts. Uh, it's, it's kind of only played in one archetype. However, I think you might actually play this even in a druid deck that focus on rain. And you also, as you see, uh, you played in Pirate. So there might be... Uh, I actually recently played an Onslaught Pirate deck. It, was, it wasn't it was that bad. It was actually close to be playable. And I think you play this with, uh, with uh, the leader ability that spawns Rain. And you kind of play the hybrid of a Pirate Damage and Rain de uh, de deck. I don't think you play cards like... Uh, the drummer that boosts when there is a rain. I don't think so, but you just play everything that spawns raid and everything that damages, and you basically uh, shut down your opponent board. And this card is uh, work is good for this because if you play this leader ability, you sometimes end up in the situations that you cannot get enough value from this weather because you already played some uh, rain. You want to play more of this rain, and it's a short round and it won't trigger and you are disappointed that you wasted so much provision because this uh, leader ability cost a lot of provision and you don't get the full value from it. This helps you get this uh, maximum value from it and also what is uh, kind of OP in this card is not that it can trigger, sometimes it will be just 8 for 8, sometimes you won't even play this card, sometimes you, would pref you will prefer to use your summon on like Melusine, sometimes you will prefer to use your summon on like uh, the card that we just saw, sometimes you will just not on Dagur, I think, sometimes you will just prefer to play it on Dagur, and you won't touch this card at all in the game, but having this card in your deck means that you will start your uh, game with 24 cards, so basically it's like a sort of, okay, very sort of free on a romancy, or like a one free thing, which makes your deck much consistent. Basically, imagine that you played Roach in your deck for 8 provision. Kind of. You don't get these points. So imagine that you play Roach that, that uh, gives you 0 points. It's a, it's, a kind, it's a very good thing because uh, you are more likely, and it's actually better because it... Uh, you don't risk breaking your mulligan because it's always in your graveyard. So you already started with 24 cards. So your draw on average is much better because you play less cards. So it's more likely you get to all of your crucial cards, which me makes this card even better. You actually, I think there might be consideration in decks that want to thin heavily to play this card and not use it at all just because you make your deck 24 cards, which is nuts. I don't know if this, is, this will be the case, maybe it will be like super niche scenario in some very weird competitive environment, but it might be a case. It's basically pay 8 provision, but you don't... But you, it's like paying 8 provision for a free mulligan, or pay for 8 provision for not risking the mulligan you actually might see this card play in decks that doesn't synergize at all with this card just to make your deck better. But coming back to its ability, mm, it will be a nice payoff because uh, often, for example, with Fulmar, you get this uh, big, uh, you set up this big storm and you have five turns of storm 
But your opponent have like two more cards only, so you are a little bit disappointing. But with this card, you accidentally just summon it and trigger and damage everything by 15. And coming back to the previous card, you trigger everything by 15 and you boost this card by 15. And this card turns out to be uh, 20 points for 6. That's why I call it Shell Eater, because she's like a self eater for relics, but for rain in Skellige. It's a basically self eater that if you cannot answer him, it really goes bonkers. Like self eater before the nerf could go to like 20 points and it was hard to remove. The problem is now self eater is quite easy to remove because you can just uh, deal five to it. To this, you can also do it. However, you can instantly set up it this to six, which is harder to remove like we've seen with self eater. When self eater was at six, he was nuts because it's hard to remove 6. This, with any rain, instantly goes to 6. Moreover, uh, Monsters doesn't have a way to resurrect uh, their units as much as Skellige can. Monster doesn't have double Sigrid uh, uh, Sigridas, right? Uh, double, blah, blah, blah. Freya's Blessing, sorry. And it doesn't have Sigrida, uh, right? And it doesn't have Bright of the Sea, which now see, will see a lot of play. And also, it doesn't have the card that we haven't seen yet. So this is this card is absolutely nuts coming again, especially with combination with this card. Uh, this is basically, if you play it in the um, long uncapped greatsword territory, uh, this has potential to be a finisher of like 40, 50 points when everything triggers. Then you add dagger to it. You, die, you add a defender that will be like, no one will able to kill it. That's the thing. You To counter Skellige, you will have to outgrid it or you will have to lock and stop everything. You cannot really kill those stuff, which might be a problem. We will see. And and the creme de la creme, Fukushia, that please, I will call it Fushia. Uh, Fushia, deploy play a Skellige unit from your graveyard with provision cost of 10 or less and give it doom. Spawn rain on the opposite row with a duration equal to unused provision. So one thing that is uh, uh, a little bit confusing, uh, in the if you go to the um, play web, Gwent website and you go to the Skellige cards, uh, you have here that it's uh, Dan. On the reveal we don't have this Dan, so I'm confused, but Dan kind of indicates that it's sponsoring after. However, it was confirmed by CD Projekt that is not the case. And the rain will spawn. It's basically, this is pick a card, spawns a rain equal to uh, 10 minus the provision of the card, and then play the card. So for example, Bright of the Sea will work. Bright of the Sea is eight, uh, eight provision. So when you uh, use uh, Fuchsia on uh, uh, Bright of the Sea, you will be able to play the six provision Alchemy anyway, which means you can play uh, Freya's Blessing, which means you can summon all of the cards that I said that you can summon, which is nuts. Also, you just add one uh, your, of your leader charge and you use this and you can re resurrect Sigridas, right? So you can resurrect the epic card that we just saw. So also you can just use it on Greatsword and summon four rain, which also synergize with two cards that we just saw. This card is nuts. Also, you can just play it in any value card, any value deck. You can. I don't. I'm not sure if you play it in the reckless flurry deck like we have at the moment, but maybe why not? But there are there are so many good cards that you want to replay. Also, this is play. It's not summon, which means that you can resummon uh, Yonut, Tirgvi, Dagur, uh, Morgvar, uh, Krach. All of these cards. You can just replay. Some people just used even Renew to replay these cards. You can use this card, which is Renew, but also with five power, and also can be used on smaller cards to just give give you rain. This is kind of like an amphibious assault in revert, reverse for Skellige. And you know, amphibious assault is not card. The only problem of this card is that it's very expensive and maybe just maybe some of the decks won't have place for it, but it's like talking uh, about uh, NR decks not uh, being able to f find play, play, well, uh, 
place for Amphibisa. So this is kind of not a case because this is such a good value card that you kind of don't want to not use it. Uh, so yeah, these are Skelly cards, decks, uh, uh, cards, new cards. What I think about it? Uh, the biggest enemy of these uh, cards will be uh, no unitless decks. All of these cards work terribly against uh, terribly uh, against the no unit deck. However, against no unit decks, you have some good cards that are just good points. The Skellige have a lot of cards that are just good points. You just slam eight, you just slam slam ten. Even the new four uh, P card, the, the 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 four provision card, you don't have to click it for rain. You can play one, then second, and uh, maybe the third from even location. But I doubt it. And you have like uh, how many? Twenty two points on the board uh, for twelve provision. Sort of, sort of, sort of, because location is not. But well, you, do you see what I mean? It's like you have already big bodies. Uh, any swarm deck is instantly dead. Any swarm deck cannot win against this uh, kind of uh, power, I think, unless they out uh, tempo them so much that you need to go two cards down and they have like every single answer and like locks maybe. But mm, I can see. Like, I don't see any Swarm deck to survive this uh, uh, Skellige, really. Uh, the only thing that can, s apart from uh, no Union deck, the only thing that uh, this Skellige might fear is uh, Nilfgaard. If it's very heavy control Nilfgaard deck, with tons of locks, with a lot of deck, man uh, deck manipulation, with a lot of... Uh, mm, with a lot of uh, graveyard manipulation. And maybe even, I'm I'm very sad to say it, but this deck might be bad against the mill. How, on the other hand, it's gonna, even if you get like this, no, I take it back, I take it back. You have all of these value cards that you, even if you don't draw them all, you just win the game anyway, right? Uh, you just play a lot of, no, I take it back. This deck is still gonna beat mill. Everything is gonna beat mill. Uh, yeah, so I can see a deck a new deck, new archetype of a deck, which will be, like, it's not gonna be Reckless Flurry control deck, it's not gonna be a uh, Druid deck, and I, 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 I actually think those decks will survive, but there will be a third new deck that will be all about value and damage and blood first. It will be rain heavy deck with rain leader ability, with Dagur, all of these cards, I think so, uh, with Sigrid that's right, with Purify, Hermion, with uh, Melus In, with Sigrida's Light, with uh, Bride of the Sea, uh, with Fulmar, Skellige Storm, Wild Boar of the Sea, uh, the Alchemy that we've so seen last expansion, uh, Offering to the Sea, and the usual suspects of like Totem, whatever. You know what I mean? There will be like a, maybe even, maybe you can even make it a pirate deck. You can even maybe add Krach and some ships that just for a control of round one. Uh, and then you just play this heavy damage, heavy value deck. I think Skellige might be nuts. We will see how it will evolve. Thank you very much for watching. I will try to process everything in my head. And remember, we need to still see patch notes. And I will come back in two days with monsters. Thank you very much for watching. See you next time.